Welcome back. It seems we have a choice. Either retrieve the information in this computer, which could be very valuable to the Federation, and condemn the Balkosi to a life of violence, as they are affected by that gas that will be pumped into the atmosphere. Or we could try to shut everything down, which, uh, from the sound of it, would also initiate the remote shutdown of the gas tank we saw. But since this is a volatile memory, all the contents will be lost when we do so. Let's see if we can fix the power generator pillar. We do have a couple of more components here, after all. This item will not affect the repair this unit needs. Oh, okay. Guess we need to use the cable. I mean the card. First, the interface card. The readout is now fully functional. There are other locations on this planet receiving power from this generator. Most peculiar. The locations of these units are not in the database. And you think they should be? It would be logical, Captain. But removing the circuit that controls the on and off functions of this device would also be illogical. Are you trying to tell me that's what happened here? Exactly, Captain. Until that repair is made, it would be impossible to execute a proper shutdown procedure. Interesting. It seems like they almost want to tempt us to use the information by making the shutdown more complicated. Again, seems like we're being tested. The repair is complete, Captain. It would now be possible to safely shut this machine down. However, doing so would certainly affect all the other equipment in this complex. If it also shuts down the gas, then I believe that is the correct choice. Captain, do you wish me to start the shutdown sequence on the generator? Let's hold off on that for now, Spock. Shut it down, Spock. I think we should. And save the Balkosi from whatever it is these people were doing. Well, that ends that threat. The Balkosi can rest peacefully tonight and from now on. It is still a trying time in their development, Doctor. Think of it as an adventure, Spock. Scotty, three to beam up. Captain, the power source has completed its shutdown cycle. There is no trace of the bacteria or pheromone in the atmosphere. It would appear the Balkosi are free to choose their own future. Good to hear, Spock. I know losing a find like that archive has to hurt. That would be an emotional response. Of course it would. How silly of me. Captain, there are two signals being broadcast from the planet. The first is another burst following the same path as the original broadcast. The other signal emanates from nearby the first. It's aimed at us, Captain. Message from Starfleet, Captain. On screen, Lieutenant. Interesting report, Jim. I think you were right to release the Balcosi from outside influence. Too bad you couldn't retrieve the archive. No one at Starfleet has any idea who was behind all this, or what the testing message was all about. Keep us informed as you find out more. I've got confidence in you, Jim. I have reviewed your report from your recent assignment, Captain, and have a few comments. I am very pleased with your performance. It was a perfect mission, Jim. Your reputation as Starfleet's best starship captain is secure. Kane out. Okay, well, that was ominous. Testing continues. No man's land. Captain's log, stardate 6236.5. Following our mission to Balcos, the Enterprise is proceeding to Omega Corvus to probe radiation clouds. We are expecting an uneventful mission. Message from Starfleet Command. On screen. This is a code to emergency, Captain. Three Federation ships have vanished in the Delphi system within the last month. Three days ago, we lost contact with the USS Zimbabwe. 
You are to go to the Delphi system and find out what's happened to our ships. Starfleet out. Okay, so much for a uh, nice and easy mission, I guess. So we have to find out what happened to those ships. Could it be related to this testing? Who knows? I guess it could be. I also wonder if this testing is related to the introduction at the beginning of the game. Something tells me it is. Perhaps it could even be the titular judgment rights. Anyway, we have uh, some disappearing ships to investigate. Let's uh, investigate a few things first, though. Delphi System, a ternary star system first charted 30 years ago by the USS Essex. With no habitable planets in the system, the Gamma Delphi sector is known for a high abundance of ion storms. Um, let's also look up the... Z the Zimbabwe. USS Zimbabwe. Constitution class starship commissioned star date 5621.3, currently under the command of Captain Ulysses Monteya. The Zimbabwe's current non classified missions include ferrying diplomats between Babel and Vulcan and searching for missing ships in the Delphi sector. And we look up the captain of this ship. Ulysses Montea, Starfleet rank captain. Current assignment, command of the USS Zimbabwe. Graduated fifth in his academy class. Captain Montea served as ensign and later lieutenant aboard the USS Jersey, as lieutenant commander aboard the USS Senurix, and as first officer and later commander of the USS Regulus. Captain Montea has been decorated nine times by Starfleet for various feats of bravery and valor. Okay, uh, I think we can also look up um, Omega Corvus. Omega Corvus, a Federation system located near the Galactic Barrier. The Omega Corvus system contains a small colony of several hundred scientists who studied the Galactic Barrier and some of its more mysterious phenomena. All right, Spock on the inside. The Delphi system is not far from Romulan space. Let's not make any accusations without proof, Mr. Spock. I make no accusations, Captain. I am simply pointing out relevant information based on the most logical hypothesis available. I would not recommend drawing a definite conclusion from it. In that case, we won't. All right, so let's head for the Delphi system. I think that's this one, yes. Captain, at our current speed of warp 7, I expect to enter the Delphi system in 8 minutes. Captain, I just started getting the oddest noise on all channels. It sounds like some sort of insect drone. Let's hear it, Lieutenant. Oh, sounds like a the propeller. The object is approaching the Enterprise. Onspeed. Mr. Spock, is that what I think it is? Sensors indicate that it is an authentic Earth warplane, circa 1917, belonging to the nation of Germany. Its appearance is identical to a Fokker DR-1. Sensors also indicate an immense power source and one life form. We are being hailed. This is Baron Trelane von Gothis of the German Air Circus. I have identified you as an enemy aircraft. You have 10 seconds to surrender before I blow you out of the sky. Trelane, but I thought we'd seen the last of you. Trelane, the squire of Gophos. That is the uh, title he used before in an episode of the same name. And this is, in fact, the same actor uh, reprising the role. It seems he has moved on his uh, fancy. He was interested in some aspects of human culture before, but um, 
a uh, German triplane seems a little bit more modern than what he was doing last time. Stop playing games, Trelane. Leave my ship alone. We surrender. Yeah, I'm sure that'll go well. Trelane. Triplanes didn't have radios during the First World War. Trelane, but I thought we'd seen the last of you. Trelane. Triplanes didn't have radios during the First World War. Hmm. He did seem very interested in his uh, historical recreation, so maybe this will get to him. Captain Kirk, that is not the way for mortal enemies to greet each other on the field of battle. Of course you hadn't seen the last of me. I am Trelane, the humble Baron of Gothas. Humility is not something that I would associate with you, Trelane. And I guess he's changed his title. I suppose we're going to get another tantrum from a runaway child with too much power for his own good. Yes, last time we saw Trelane, he um, basically got scolded by his parents at the end for playing games with uh, sentient life forms, i.e. the crew of the Enterprise. Hopefully his parents are still around, and they will just intervene, and then this mission will be over. Probably not. Mortal enemies? When are you going to grow up, Trelane? It doesn't really matter all that much what you say to him. Not for several millennia, I'm afraid. Of course, the Baron von Gothis does not have to aspire to such lofty heights to defeat his latest victim. You were responsible for what happened to the Zimbabwe? I think it sounds like he is. We'll see who the victim will be, Trelane. No matter how powerful you are, your arrogance and your immaturity will always be your downfall. Why don't you aspire to lofty heights and leave us alone? You were responsible for what happened to the Zimbabwe? Was that one of the valiant pilots who is now confined in my dungeon? Perhaps you wish to join him. Sensors indicate he is closing on us. I would extrapolate that he intends to fire on us. Raise shields, evasive maneuvers. Raising shields. Sensors indicate that our hull would not hold against his attack. Trelay. We have been unconscious for a considerable length of time, Captain. This is Lieutenant Commander Ellis, First Officer and Security Chief of the USS Zimbabwe. Hello, Mr. Ellis. Where is your captain? He was in sick bay at the time that triplane attacked us. I don't know what's going on. What is going on, Commander, is a gentleman named Trelane, an immature child of a race with vast powers. Somehow he acquired an unhealthy fascination with human military history. Last time we encountered him, he had an interest in the Napoleonic era. It would appear, Captain, that his awareness of human history has advanced to the level of your First World War. If it advances any further. Not only do we need to escape this place, but we need to find a way to discourage Trelane's interest in war once and for all. How did you escape from him last time, Captain? His parents appeared and punished him. I doubt that we can rely on such an intervention a second time. Yeah, because if he keeps going on this course, he'll get to the Second World War, and, you know, while the First World War was pretty terrible, that's an understatement, to say the least, in terms of the amount of damage done, the um, Second World War is a hell of a lot worse. If you have combat turned on, you do in fact have to fight Trelane's triplane, which is kind of funny, but also extremely annoying. He is a tough opponent to beat. And even when you do beat him, um, the outcome will be the same. You end up in what appears to be a cell here, with a leaky ceiling by the looks of it. So I guess our first order of business should be to um, get out of this cell. Do we still have our inventory? Yes, we have everything with us. Well, that's useful. Unlike we were when we were in the brig in the first mission, when all of our uh, stuff was taken from us. Can we just try to contact the Enterprise? The communicators are functioning, Captain. 
If there were other Federation personnel on this planet, we would be able to communicate with them. Provided their communicators haven't been confiscated or the persons are in any physical condition to answer. I did not wish to state the obvious, Doctor. Ha! All right, I guess we're not talking to anybody. Do the phasers work? It's not firing. The phasers have been completely drained of energy. Courtesy of our charming host, no doubt. No doubt. Well, gentlemen, if we're going to beat Trelane, we'll have to beat him on his own terms. All right, so we're not getting out that way. Let's see if we can find a better way to escape. The floor is not very clean, especially when compared to a well-run starship. I guess not. The walls of this room look very sturdy. The walls of this room look very sturdy. There are many bundles of sticks piled against the wall. A small barrel rests against the wall. It is empty. Straw, not the sort of bedding that Starfleet officers are used to. Rather damp, too. Yeah. Doesn't look like a nice place to sleep. Hopefully we won't be in here that long. A crate. It is labeled schnapps. It is nailed shut. I guess this is uh, both a storage room and a cell. A crate. It is labeled schnapps. It is nailed shut. A crate. It is labeled schnapps. It is unopened. Aha, but not nailed shut, so I guess we can open this one. A light bulb, triggered by a chain, is suspended above the center of the room. The chain is broken. Interesting. The walls of this room. James T. Kirk, who wonders how he's going to defeat Trelane this time. Mr. Spock finds this situation fascinating. I guess it is, even if it is also life-threatening, so... Dr. Leonard McCoy, who wonders what is really going on. And for the first time, we have a fourth crew member, a red shirt, although he does not come from the Enterprise. Lieutenant Commander Ellis is frowning. This sort of stuff always seems to happen to the Enterprise. I guess the uh, Zimbabwe's pursuits are less... Um, Interesting, shall we say? Anyone have any ideas about how to get out of here? Fascinating. This appears to be an Earth domicile, late 19th or early 20th century. Well, if this is the First World War, then I would guess um, early 20th. Okay, take us out of here. Yeah, I'm working on it. At least nobody's sick. Are they? Lieutenant Commander Ellis is showing heightened levels of stress. Well, I guess that doesn't come to sick. The phrase, physician, heal thyself, has always annoyed me. James T. Kirk. Slightly heightened levels of adrenaline, but otherwise normal. Mr. Spock, I can never tell what's right and what's wrong with these Vulcans. You'd think you'd be more familiar with their anatomy, considering they are, uh, you know, one of the founding members of the Federation. There is nothing unusual about the door. I'm conducting a sensor sweep of the area. We appear to be about 15 meters underground. There's a single human life force stationary, approximately six meters from the door, and about six life forms in our immediate vicinity on the surface. Okay, so we're not the only ones here. The tricorder detects nothing unusual. These sticks were taken from a pine tree. Given their shape, I would speculate that they are used for kindling. 
Ordinary straw, Captain. The tricorder detects no unusual properties. It would appear to be an ordinary crate, Captain. Of course it's a crate. It looks like a crate, feels like a crate. What else could it be? Doctor, we are dealing with an entity who is capable of sustaining an artificial atmosphere on a planet and then flying that planet around the universe like a starship. Spock's right, Bones. When we're dealing with Trelane, we need all the information that we can get. Something that looks trivial might be the key to defeating him and saving the Enterprise. And the Zimbabwe. Yeah, last time he had some kind of uh, power generating machinery hidden behind a mirror. So there could be something like that here. This light bulb is an anachronism. Although its light output is typical of period lighting sources, it is far more energy efficient and encased in shatterproof glass. Trelane was never very good at getting the fine details right. A correct observation, Doctor. Indeed. Can we just go out the door? I can't seem to force this door open. This lock is tougher than I'd expect for this time period. Fascinating. Can we scan the lock? There is nothing unusual about the door. Guess not. Can we look through the here? The only door in this room. It is locked. No. The door is securely locked, Captain. I am unable to open it. Does anyone have a safety pin? A what? I don't think so. Um, that wasn't Kirk. Hmm. Well, it looks like we... Need to find another way out of here. We're not getting the attention of anybody outside. Can't even bang on the door. Uh, what do we have, though? We have... Some straw. And we have these sticks here. I think we can you get those. You pick up a stick. I don't think straw? we'll need it. And we could probably get it somewhere else if we did. These sticks were taken from local fir trees. They seem rather brittle. Spock said that they thought they were used for kindling, so maybe we can start a fire. Well, I thought I could start a fire and try to get someone's attention, but I guess the straw is too damp. Yeah, that won't work. Uh, what else do we have? We have one crate that looked like we could open. The crate is open. It is full of bottles of Himrick schnapps. The date on the bottle says 1913. Is that a good year for schnapps? I have no idea. It would appear to be an ordinary crate, Captain. I was hoping you would tell me about the schnapps, but... You have taken several bottles of schnapps. Guess we'll get it first. The finest schnapps that money can buy, or so you'd like to imagine. We have no idea, do we? This registers on my tricorder as schnapps, an alcoholic beverage. We know what schnapps is, Spock. My apologies, Doctor. Um, not so sure. Save new game. Replace pre- Is it possible to, um, drink the schnapps? No thanks, we'll need all of our wits if we are to defeat Trelane. No. Keep confusing this with a Sierra game. I wasn't expecting that to kill me or anything, but... Maybe if it did let you, it might negatively affect the score, and we don't want that, of course. So I would have reloaded if it had. However, um, alcohol might um, aid us in starting a fire. Although, to be honest, I don't think schnapps has a high enough alcoholic content to really help for that, but, you know... You cover the straw with schnapps. Might as well give it a try. 
That seems to work. What's going on here? We should leave this building immediately. The proximity of this fire to a large concentration of alcohol puts us at considerable risk. This guard looks like he wants you to give him an excuse to shoot. Our phasers don't work, so let's just try and talk to him. Do you think the Baron cares if you burn to death? Who is this Baron? Trelane? Uh, we already know that. Don't be a fool, man. If you keep us in here, you'll die too. Um, he might care about his own life more than ours. It depends on whether he likes his prisoners rare, medium, or well done. Okay, that's funny, but useless. Who is this? Don't be a fool, man. Let's go if with this. Keep us in here, you'll die too. You have a point, Kirk. Go. I will be following. Our soldier friend seems to have gotten separated from us. I heard some windows breaking on the other side of the building. I assume that was him. The building is structurally sound, Captain. I doubt that it would collapse, but as a precaution, I would not enter it again. Well, where are we, Mr. Spock? Isn't it obvious? In trouble. Do you have a problem, Mr. Ellis? Yes, sir, I have a problem. His name was... The Baron does not appreciate vagrants. Why that? What? This looks like a man who enjoys his work. A little too much, I think. Do not interfere, or the same thing will happen to you. How would you like to pick on someone your own size? What has this man done? You're really a tough guy, aren't you? It can't be easy to bully some old man. I'm really impressed. How would you like to pick on someone your own size? The Baron will deal with you in due time. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, you know what? How about a taste of your own medicine? Having fun, Jim? That was very satisfying, yes, thank you. What's this guy doing? The old man is groaning in pain. The bullying soldier beat him badly. That, um, doesn't sound good. Hopefully our tricorders, uh, well we know the tricorder works. Hopefully the medkit will work. And we can help him. A human, approximately 60 years of age, in poor physical condition. His hip is broken, Jim. He needs our help. Let's help him, if we can. Uh, that should fix the hip problem. He should rest. Thank goodness Trelane didn't take the tranquilizers from my med kit. He'd probably be too tired to talk much. Um, how's the soldier doing? He's not going to be bothering anyone for a while. That's good, I guess. The old man stares at McCoy in wonder and gratitude. We talk to him? Thank you for helping me. If only I had something to repay you. You could tell us where we are. You... You are the American pilot, Lieutenant Colonel Jimmy Kirk, the leader of the famous Enterprise Squadron. Lieutenant Colonel? Jimmy? Enterprise Squadron? I suppose I should tell you nothing, but as it looks as though the war will soon be over, I can tell you that this is the village of Gothos. What war is this? The Great War. The one that has lasted for four damned years and has killed millions. I never thought that it was possible for so many young people to die for such a worthless cause. I believe he refers to the first of your world wars. Could you answer an important question for me, sir? What year is this? Well, considering he said it was the end of the First World War, I would assume either 1917 or 1918, so we don't really need to ask him that. Where's Trelane? Hmm, I doubt he would know that as directly. What else has happened? What year is this? What else has happened? Let's actually ask him this. It is rumored that our forces are mutinying, and that our ambassadors have met with Mr. Wilson to discuss an armistice, but that Mr. Wilson will not negotiate with anyone except an elected government. Baron Trelane has retired to his castle and sees no one. His men are nothing more than bullies. 
All right. I don't think you can talk to him anymore. I am so tired. I must rest. Yeah, you only get to ask him the one question, I think. Anyway, it looks like we are in some kind of uh, European town. His accent seems kind of German, and um, so is the plane. But um, the words on the tavern and the shop are English, so that doesn't make sense. I guess that's Trelane's doing. Uneven cobblestones pave this European street. A burnt out hovel. This is where Trelane placed you after you were taken from the Enterprise. This placid sky betrays no hint of the danger of your situation. Indeed, it does not, I guess. A quaint village shop, typical of early 20th century Earth. The shoppy, I guess. A quaint village. A quaint little pub, reminiscent of 19th century German pubs. Well, considering where we are, that's not surprising. This seems pointless. Looks like there's a person standing in the door, which you can't look at her, I would this guess. This seems pointless. James T. Kirk, who feels a little ragged right now. Dr. McCoy, pondering the unusual nature of this situation. Mr. Spock, pondering the illogic of this situation. Lieutenant Commander Ellis glares at Kirk. What's this guy's problem? Not a bad place to visit, but I can't say I like some of the natives. Not quite, no. Maybe you'd visit it when there's not a war on. I didn't join Starfleet to play at being a galactic tourist. This strikes me as something of a Potemkin village, Captain. It lacks the scope to be truly real. A creation of Trelane's, no doubt. One of his imitations of reality. Undoubtedly, Captain, there is a high probability that it will be an extremely deadly place. True. All right, Commander, you were about to tell us why you're being so hostile. Let's hear your story. Does the name Lieutenant Ralph Garvin sound familiar to you? He was my roommate at the Academy and was killed by some blood-sucking cloud while on a landing party under your command. Space is not the safest of environments. I've always done my best to protect my crew, and I've always honored anyone who has lost their life under my command. The Enterprise is routinely assigned to unknown and extremely dangerous sectors. I have always made it a policy to lead landing parties and share the risk with my men. I suppose you've never lost someone under your command, Commander. You've never felt the loss of a subordinate while you've been on a landing party. When you become a captain of a starship, you'll have every right to judge me. We're in the middle of a life and death situation. I expect you to act like a Starfleet officer. I have always made it a policy to lead landing parties and share the risk with my men. Oh, let's pick this one. Captain, if I see you do anything that puts us or our escape at risk, you'll regret it. I'm not interested in vendettas. I'm interested in survival. If you have a problem with me, you can wait until everyone's safe. Is that clear, Commander? Yes, sir. Okay, well, he, uh... Seems to have, uh, a bit of a problem with Kirk. Hopefully that won't get in the way of anything. Captain, I'm picking up abnormally strong energy readings in the building labeled shop. Okay, that's interesting. My tricorder detects an incredibly strong power source within that shop. I recommend that we enter it immediately and examine it at close range. Interesting. Definitely have to take a look at that. Captain, I'm picking up abnormally strong energy readings in the building labeled shop. Doesn't look like we can scan anything else here. So we'll check out those energy readings in the next video.